it's summer now, apparently, which is crazy. <laughs> I was not expecting this to happen. Um, I'm currently studying for the bar, so I'm miserable, and I'm spending a lot of time reading as a form of procrastination. So I thought it'd be fun to do a little video where I talk about the books I want to read this summer, even though like it's already summer, so this is coming a little bit late, but just bear with me. I'm a mess. I'm studying for the bar. I have an excuse for anything right now, to be honest. So let's get into the books that I want to read this summer. <laughs> The first book on my summer TBR is No Name in the Streets by James Baldwin. Oh, I should hold it up over here. Wait. No Name in the Streets by James Baldwin. This is James Baldwin's memoir, and it talks about the 60s and 70s, and it has a lot of, like, political and social commentary on America. I want to read this because I recently read... What was the name of that book? I recently read The Fire Next Time by James Baldwin, and I loved it. I loved his writing, I loved his commentary, and I just really want to read more by him. I do want to read his fiction, but I really want to hear his like political thoughts. I'm not sure how much that is in his fiction. I'm sure it's in his fiction. It's James Baldwin. I'm sure his fiction has like political overtures, but I really want to read his nonfiction first, to be honest. And I already have this one on my shelf, so I thought it would be the perfect thing to read next. I'm really excited about this one. I really want to learn more about him and just read more of his writing because it was incredible. Next is a book that I know I'm going to get to, and that is Stay and Fight by Madeline Fitch. This book I don't know much about. I know that it takes place in Appalachia, um, and it follows like a family, I think, and it talks a lot about like community in Appalachia. That's pretty much all I know. Um, the reason I want to read this is because this is a book that every single member of Boy Genius loves. So if you don't know who I'm talking about, I'm talking about Phoebe Bridgers, Lucy Dacus, Julian Baker. They're in a band called Boy Genius. I'm kind of obsessed with it. And they talk frequently about the books that they read. And this is a book that every single member has highly praised and recommended. And that makes me really want to read it. And I will be reading this in the last video of my Boy Genius book club, which will be focusing on Julian. Um, so I'm definitely going to be getting to this, hopefully this summer, and I'm super, super pumped about it. Next, we have a book I recently picked up, which is The Kites by Romaine Gary. I just really like this cover. I don't know why I like it so much, but I do. This book takes place during the Holocaust, um, and it follows a young boy named Ludo, who falls in love with a girl named Lila, who's from, like, a rich Polish family that lives next door. And Lila begins to reciprocate those feelings, but then World War II happens, and... Her and her family disappear, and it says Ludo's devotion to saving her from the Nazis becomes a journey to save his love, his loved one, his country, and ultimately himself. I don't know why I, I want to read this so bad. It just sounds really interesting. It sounds really heartbreaking, and I love the cover. So here I am. After that, we have Dangers of Smoking in Bed, Mariana Enriquez. This is a short story collection, and it's kind of weird that I put a short story collection on a TBR because although I buy a lot of them for some reason, I don't like them that much. <laughs> like I always just read a short story collection and I'm like okay that's fine but I'm never really wowed by them um I'm just like a novel girly so I don't know why I buy so many short story collections this one though I am very interested in because it's supposed to be magical realism I think it's supposed to be kind of gothic and spooky too and I've heard a lot about this author and about her talent so it just really intrigues me and I want to give it a shot because I want to like short story collections, hence why I buy so many of them. I don't buy them thinking I won't like them. I buy them thinking I'm going to like them, but I never like them. So I really want to like this one. And then I was thinking like when I was picking up this TBR, I was like, okay, but like what kind of books do people read in summer? Because honestly, my TBRs are kind of just like, these are the books I'm most excited about right now. And they're not really catered to the season at all so this is the only book that I kind of catered to the season because I feel like during summer a lot of people want to read like romances um or at least that's what I've seen watching other people's TBRs for the summer and so I decided that the romance I want to read this summer is Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen it took me a second I almost said Jane Eyre that would have been awful <laughs> um I've read most of Jane Austen by now I it's just this one and Mansfield Park that are left um they've been like hit or miss for me I'm obsessed with Emma I love it so much the other ones have just been like okay to okay pretty good um but this one is supposed to be her gothic romance and that intrigues me I love a good gothic story and I'm really excited to see what Jane Austen does with like a gothic environment I'm just excited to see how it changes her writing or how it affects the characters and I think it'll be a lot of fun this has been on many TBRs and I think 
that I might actually be able to pick it up this summer once I'm done with the bar. Because my excuse for not reading classics or not reading a lot of nonfiction has been, first of all, that was in law school and my brain was fried. And now I'm taking the bar, my brain is also fried. So my idea is that once I'm done with the bar, because I'm now done with law school, that I can finally read more challenging stuff and like enjoy it more. Because it's just so hard when you're trying to retain so much like complicated information to then when you're trying to relax, like pick up a more complicated book if that makes sense to anyone but me that's those are my thoughts on the subject and that's what i'm hoping to achieve after july next book on this list is against the loveless world by susan abel hawa this is a palestinian author and this is a palestinian story it follows a young woman who's sharing her life story from an israeli confinement cell that's all I know and that's all I want to know going into it so I'm not going to be reading the back to get more information I'm sorry I really want to make a video where I read books by Palestinian authors um I've been wanting to make videos in general where I read books according to like the country they're published in Palestinian authors they're not always like published in Palestine because of certain circumstances so I'm gonna make a little bit of an exception for that one but anyway I've been wanting to like read more diversely I really want to read more Palestinian stories given everything that's going on right now and how awful everything is I feel like it's an important time to amplify those voices and I'm really excited about this one because I've heard such good things about it I really want to pick it up the next book on my summer TBR is Bright Young Woman by Who's a Spy? Jessica Knoll this book has also been on a couple of TBRs by now so I don't know why I haven't picked it up this book is inspired by like Ted Bundy but it doesn't really talk about him. It talks about the women in the case. So the women that were killed and the women who were close to those that were killed um, and their role in like solving the murders. I don't know. I saw this book on a lot of like best of 2023 lists last year. I love people put it on their favorite books of the year and it really intrigued me. I want to read more like thrillers and stuff like that. I just don't know which ones to pick up. If you have any recommendations, please leave them down below because I love to know. And yeah, I just, I'm really excited about this book. I don't know why I haven't read it yet, but hopefully this summer will be the time that I do. Next up, we have a more recent acquisition, and that is A Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson. This book is the is like a retelling, not a retelling, because I guess, I don't know if it counts as a retelling, but it's a story of like one of Dracula's brides, and she's writing like a long letter to Dracula about how he's like, he's Dracula, right? Yeah. <laughs> about how like, I think he was abusive and stuff. I don't know that much about it. I know that it's like gothic and I know that it's supposed to be very good. So I want to pick it up. I already explained to you how much I love gothic shit. So I am who I am. After that, the next book on the list is Children of Dune by Frank Herbert. This is the third book in the Dune series. If you don't know what Dune is about, it's I hate having to describe it. Like I almost want to stop reading the book so I don't have to describe it because I never know how to accurately like describe the setup. Here's me doing my best. Dune follows the Atreides family who is given control over the planet Arrakis, which is known for harvesting spice, which is something that's really important for like intergalactic travel and their form of like magic that they have. So the House Atreides takes over Arrakis, which was previously owned by House Harkonnen. And House Harkonnens are like the typical like super evil bad guys. But then shortly after House Atreides takes over, the Lord Atreides is betrayed and the Harkonnens come in and they kill everyone. And the Lord Atreides' sons Paul and his wife escape and they go to live with the Fremen, which are the indigenous people to Arrakis. And that's all I can really say, because even that's saying like a little bit too much for the first book. But I think most people kind of know the gist of it by now. This is the third book, so I can't say anything about it or about what I'm expecting, because that would be spoilers. But I've heard this is like really bad, actually. <laughs> so I don't know how excited I am about reading it. But I've also just heard that like Dune gets super crazy weird as it goes on and on. So that's what really intrigues me. And I'm willing, I can be patient. I can get through like a bad book to see how weird it gets. I can definitely do that. So this is on my list. After that, we have The Memory Police by Yoko Ogawa. This book takes place on an unnamed island and like slowly things start to disappear. Like it says on the back, first hats, then ribbons, birds, roses, and most of the inhabitants are oblivious to all these changes. But there's a few of them who are able to recall the things that are lost. And they're also able to recall when the memory police came in and got rid of all evidence of these things. So I think this is just a really cool premise and that's pretty much all I have to say. I mean, I think it sounds really cool. I've also heard good things about it. I'm just excited to get into it and it's definitely on my list. 
And the very last book on my summer TBR is King of Scars by Leigh Bardugo. This is a YA book. It's on here partially because it's a YA book. Like, I kind of just want to get through my YA books so that I don't have them on my shelves anymore. Because I'm pretty sure no matter how much I like this, it's not going to stay on my shelf. I also have the sequel right here. So I want to get through both of them, actually. If you don't know, I also don't know much about this book, so that's okay. <laughs> it's very shiny. It's it's a fucking with uh, my lighting here. But essentially, this takes place in Lee Wardrigo's Grishaverse. It follows a character whose name I cannot remember for the life of me. What is it? Nikolai. It follows Nikolai, who is in the original Grisha trilogy. And he's like a prince. But in this book, I think he's like a sailor or something like that. <laughs> I shouldn't even speak about what I think this book is about. All I know is it's part of the Grishaverse. I want to read it because I really like her Grishaverse books. And I kind of just want to get it off my shelf because it's really big and chunky. So that's why it's on the list. So there you go. Those are the books that I really want to read this summer. Let me know what books you want to read this summer down below. And I'll see you soon with another video. Goodbye.